Holy cow, it is. It's 2.01 UTC. Where does the time go? Wow. Yeah, well, hey, everybody, come on in. Come on in. If you're new, gather around. This is like a just a casual, fun get-together of friends every single day, same time, same place. Uh, but if you're new, if you're seeing this not live sometime in the future, howdy, howdy, from the past, uh, everything's pretty good here. Hope everything is well in the future as, as well. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you decide that you like this, uh, make sure to subscribe and I think you can hit the notification bell and that will, uh, alert you to, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it does. Uh, I think it sends you an email or something. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but anyway, you are alerted to the fact that uh, this live stream has gone live. And uh, so, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to, I think I pulled up my, oh, I did. I pulled up my chat. So Ada is already in the room. Tom is also in the chat. Hey, hope everybody's well. Cheers. So had a pretty good good gig this afternoon. Went uh, really well. Uh, once again, the the event was not uh, well advertised. So it, you know the crowd was just like. So you know what we call those uh, is we call those paid practice paid practices <laughs> and so that's exactly what that was that was a that was a nice uh, that was a nice uh, practice so yeah we sounded I guess we sounded okay yeah so it was fun studying astronomical instrumentation all day yeah that can be tiring it's a lot to uh, digest, but uh, you know, if you're up for it and motivated, um, then then uh, you know you're going to uh, you go, you're going to ingest uh, at a rate that um, suits you, and and uh, you know, maybe for a while you'll you'll just be like you know, totally insatiably hungry all the time. It's like, ah, ah, ah. Um, and uh, that, that may either decline or it may change. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, cool. Enjoy, enjoy this time of new um, discovery um, and sort of diving, diving underneath, you know, the surface uh, to see how, you know how deep you can go right that's one of the, that's one of the uh, one of the other ways to to sort of explain why I like astronomy as much as I do it's because the the subject matter is is both broad and deep so th it, there's a lot of subject matter right there's a lot and every single bit of that so that's sort of like a surface right subject matter right we know what all the topics are um, so that's sort of a two-dimensional surface right but then you can add you know for for each one of those points on that plane right you can you can add depth you can add uh, you know what you know about it and and what you uh, have studied about it and all of that, right? And then it gets it gets deep, so it turns into like a like some kind of a, a a cube, some kind of interesting space. So yeah, cheers.
Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm reading chat here. Yellow Lemon, nice to see you in the chat. I, uh, does that, have you been in the chat before? I want to say, I want to say that you have been. I want to say that you have been, but I'm not exactly sure. So, well, welcome anyway. Welcome. And uh, yeah, just gathering around, seeing what's up with everybody else. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a difficult process, or at least it can be. Um, but really, I think, you know, we're, we're sort of in charge of how difficult it is, because I think a lot uh, a lot of times we, we create our own barriers, you know, it's like, oh, I can't possibly understand that. And it's like, you know, my, my attitude is, is like this. I don't, I don't think that I need to know everything, right? I, uh, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm totally, in alignment though with um, the Gnostics, right? Uh, but I'm just not, I'm not really interested in that. So, so, uh, oh man, where was I going with that? Oh, it's awful, cheers. Hmm. Well, hang in there, um, yellow lemon, just hang in there. All right. I think I definitely remember Yellow Lemon. Yellow Lemon, goodbye. There we go. Bye bye. We're uh, we're talking astronomy here, and that that definitely is that definitely is a state of mind, for sure, right? For absolute sure. Um, Yeah, uh, Atta, I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. That that means that this channel and this live stream is 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 starting to become popular. So that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. But yeah, I thought I think I recognized um, Yellow Lemon from before, and and uh, it was sort of the same the same uh, uh, series of, of, of messages. And so it's sort of like, okay, all right, goodbye. <laughs> so because uh, that, that particular individual and or uh, thing doesn't, uh, the, you're not, uh, not talking astronomy there. So, uh, you know, if you're not talking astronomy or science then yeah you need to find somewhere else because we're we're uh you know i'm not doing a fishing expedition here right i'm not trying to to draw in everybody that i possibly can and then you know maybe maybe catch a few or so no i'm i'm uh i'm uh, harpooning <laughs> so i uh i try to go out and 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 find and sometimes you know uh the big fish find find me so uh that's very very cool all right yeah i still haven't ordered my camera yet i need to do that 
I need to do that. There's nothing stopping me uh, except me just pushing the button. So, uh, yeah, I will do that. I will do that. Cheers. Yeah, but Atta, I think I think you know it might be a special interest group, um, and and you know I think that's right. But I think worldwide, I think it's a pretty big crowd. I think it's a pretty big crowd. So so uh, I mean I can I can I can definitely um, envision ten times as many um, people in here. Um, yeah, easy easy pretty easy so it's it's just a matter of time you just have to stick with these things you know fraser kane right over at the weekly space hangout um and i think they're on summer hiatus right now so they're not going to have any new shows until like uh august or september um yeah they they uh i uh not I'm not exactly sure why uh, he does that. Um, it's I'm sh I'm sure I'm sure it's got it's got a history and it's probably a pretty good reason. I mean they're they're going at it pretty hard um, from you know almost a completely different angle than than um, myself, right? They're they're. Uh, they're working really, really, really hard, and I'm I'm hardly working at all. <laughs> so, so I'm just having fun. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I don't think that it's, I don't think uh, that it's incredibly small, either. It's just a matter of, uh, you know. As I said, you know, with 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 YouTube, with this kind of stuff, the the number one thing is um, consistency. Consistency. You set up some kind of a cadence, and you and you go to that cadence. And for me, going going to that cadence is extremely. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say extremely easy, but it's very very easy, right? Very very easy not doing anything anyway i'm sitting here thinking about astronomy anyway so so it's like why not just do do this and uh you know find find my people <laughs> who who uh you know uh like this kind of um format right where it's not it's not really reporting the news and it's not really trying to teach you anything um uh it's just uh, you're you're just coming along for the ride right i mean i'm the host and and uh you, you come into into my my little domain here and uh i take you off onto a journey and that's it and that's it um So a next star evolution. What uh, what size? What size next star evolution? Uh, I'm gonna hide. Uh, I don't know why that's there. I was over here. So you're talking about a. Yeah, I think so, um, Uncle Bill. There was a, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, uh, somebody extremely interested in something that wasn't astronomy. So, uh, and I think I'd seen, I'd seen that, that, uh, that name before. So, so, uh, yeah, once, once I sort of recognized it, it's like, oh, goodbye. <laughs> um let's see celestron 
next star evolution. Evolution. So what what size? An eight inch? Okay. You're uh, you're you're wanting to dive in pretty heavy there, Ata. I don't know. That's a that's a it's a step. That's I think it's probably going to be quite a quite a chunk. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big chunk to be putting down on something. That's more or less exactly what I've got that you occasionally see, you know, in the background. Well, fearless is as fearless does. So, uh, yeah, well, let's see, is there a, um, can I, uh, I guess this is it, but I want to see specs. I want to see specs. Oh, this big, huge thing is up here. Not going to change anything. Oh, why aren't I seeing any? Oh, here we go. Specifications. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain. Yep, eight inch F10. Oh, you get a couple eyepieces with this. That's pretty cool. That um, 40 millimeter will will do you really, really well. The 13, oh, that's, you know, everybody ha has this misconception that you know, magnification is like the most important thing. No, 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 no. The most important thing is, uh, are you having fun? But the next most important thing is um, uh, size, really, aperture, because that's going to dictate um, not only, uh, you know, how faint a target you can see or photograph, um, but also what kind of resolution you can achieve um, when you go to, you know, if you want to get in eventually into, you know, like astrophotography or whatnot. So, yeah, you know, they're saying things like highest useful magnification 480. Now, if you magnify by 480, you're not going to see anything. So the 40 millimeter will give you a 51x magnification, which is which which you will be very happy with. And then if you really want to push it, put in you know the 13 and you'll be fine. Yeah, and it's you know, I mean, if it's anything like like mine, I mean, it's it's a very uh, it's a pretty small footprint, um, and you know, you can take the telescope off the mount. I mean, it's it's really light, so you don't have to have the telescope always on the mount, right? You can take the mount off, fold it up, put it in a corner, you, um, put the scope, you know, like back in the box or on the floor or, you know, somewhere, right? Limiting stellar magnitude 14, uh, not with an eight inch, not, not uh, by eye, no. Um, 12, you can see a 12th magnitude star, maybe a 13th with an eight inch. Maybe, but a 14th, no. Nope, nope, nope. So it's 843 times the light gathering power of the human eye. And that's, 
that's a magnification that you want as high as you possibly can because that has to do with, of course, the size of the aperture. Secondary mirror, optical tube length. See, it's really short, 17 inches. Four degrees a second. Now, I didn't see anything here about um, GPS. Because I thought um, I thought you were talking about auto auto align. I thought you were talking about auto align, but I don't see. See, this is saying. Sky align, three star align, solar system align. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm not quite sure about the the auto align in in this particular in this particular one. All right, hold on. I'm being I'm being summoned to open a door. So oh, let me get untangled. All right, I I'll, I'll, I'll be back in like ten seconds. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's a it's a uh, a module that you have to uh, attach later. That's that's probably where you know the GPS comes in because that's that's the only way that I can think um, how an auto align is actually going to work. Can't see it any other way. But yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think you're uh, you're diving in pretty deep. I hope you get some uh, some satisfaction. I really do. That's a pretty deep dive. But you will be. I mean, you're gonna have to stick with it. But you'll be really happy with those. Yeah, you'll be really happy with that one. But that's quite a chunk to drop. I'm I'm glad you can. <laughs> I'll bet you Celestron is glad too. Little hand paddle there to control everything. So there's a computer in the hand paddle and there's a computer in the in the mount. And they, of course, you know, talk to one another. But I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the data, right? They, you know, there there are star lists and object lists, and you know, all the functionality and all that. I think most of the data is stored in the hand paddle, and then just sort of the computations that have to take place to to move the mount. I think that's that's. Uh, what the um, computer inside the mount is doing. I think that's relatively obvious. So yeah, nice looking scope. Looks like it'll serve you well. Hey there, Bobby. Nice to see you in the chat. We're just looking at, uh, this is the scope that uh, Otto wants to get and uh, yeah, I think it's great. It's a uh, it's a big leap, but uh, you know, <laughs> I ain't stopping you. Just uh, you know, beware, beware of the fever. Just beware. 
you know, the fever can be a nice thing. So, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it catches. Yeah, you know, as I said, my, my recommendation, right, with these go-to mounts, which is what you're talking about, my recommendation with these go-to mounts is while you're learning the sky, do not, do not give in to the temptation. Um, you know, rather, just one of the one of the problems with with these scopes, right, is that there's no clutch, so there's no way to to move this unless it's plugged in or um, batteried up or whatever it is, right? Um, so you have to use the paddle to move around. But what my suggestion is when you're learning, right, is do it all manually, right? Then you'll learn. And, uh, but it is extremely tempting to be like, you know, look, I have been looking for, you know, M71 for an hour and I'm, I'm tired and I'm frustrated and, uh, you know, I just, I just want to see it now, right? Well, you know, you'll have to decide what to do at that point. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I am just not against anything, right? Anything that um, you know allows someone who is interested to you know get what they want out of it, and and it and if that is just looking at things, then you know, these go-to mounts are great, are great, right? But there's so much more to it than that, right? I mean, I like the hunt. The hunt is, is fun. But really to each his own. I think, uh, you know, if you're having a good time with it, uh, it doesn't really matter then. So yeah, it looks good. Looks good from this vantage point. So let's do a let's do an object of the day. Maybe call it a short day. Um, we're gonna call it random dot org. So that's that's very very exciting, Anta, and uh, I think I think you'll love it. Okay, so object of the day is a randomly chosen number between 1 and 7,840. It just so happens to be approximately uh, 7,840 of these objects in this catalog called the New General Catalog. And that was developed, I don't know, back in the 60s or the 70s. Um, um, uh, well, yeah, you know, maybe they go back even further than that. Shoot. Um, yeah, yeah, well. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Hello from hot and steamy Montreal. Hello, Jill. Nice to see you in the chat. We're just about to uh, to do an object of the day. We're going to pick from the NGC catalog and uh, see what see what comes up. Now, usually, you know, most of the NGC objects are uh, are galaxies, right? But interestingly enough. Um, 
in yesterday's live stream, um, there was this paper about these the, these uh, these researchers who um, took a look at five um, uh, what were what 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 were thought to be um, open clusters, but sort of, you know, on the, uh, well, outside of the disk of the galaxy, right? They were above, above it or below it, I forget exactly which, maybe both. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> ah, that's funny, Atta, he got you there. <laughs> um, Oh, no, I got totally distracted again. Shoot. All right. Well, whatever. Let's do an NGC object. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, they they made some observations um, um, spectroscopically, and then they used the Gaia Data Release 2 data to show that four out of the five open clusters weren't actually even clusters of stars, right? It was just the fact that line of sight, right? Line of sight, it looked like there was a clustering of, of stars where it actually was not. Only, only in one case, one out of five, um, was it an actual physical um, cluster of, 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 uh, of stars. It had a salad at I had a restaurant this afternoon with a friend. She said the salad is great. I agreed and said it was cosmic. So funny. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, C. Gilles, you are catching on, right? You you are beginning to understand that that the uh, that that the the designation cosmic lettuce, uh. uh can go very deep, right? We can really get into the, you know, the philosophy a little bit. And you've, you have just skimmed, you, you sort of, you know, dove in a little bit, right? And realized just how incredibly complex that co that that concept is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, Atta, go for it. Go for it. All right, so we're going to choose a, an object of the day. Object of the day. Uh, here we go. You ready? 5222. All right, let's 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 sort of do the regular, regular thing here. I hope, I hope that this is... This is okay, um, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to do the same thing over and over and over again. I, I, uh, but there, there are a lot of objects, astronomical objects, and um, there's something interesting about every single one of them, right? Uh, and that's that's what I'm sort of after. Fifty-two twenty-two. Is that right? 5222? Yeah. All right, let's so let's see what <laughs> Galaxy. Yeah, uh, an elliptical galaxy. That's what this E stands for here. I don't know what the other E is, but at least one of those E's means that it's elliptical. And if you look at the picture here, what yeah, what you're seeing is a uh, is a galaxy of stars, no gas, no dust, or at least you know nothing visible here. Now we'll look at this picture in more detail in a little bit, but I'm already I already want to point out some some things, right? So here's a galaxy funny looking thing and here's the galaxy funny looking thing maybe these two galaxies are probably probably 
behind this one, probably. And, well, that's probably a star. These are probably stars, right? So these stars are in the fore, whoa, in the foreground, right? In the foreground, they're in our, our galaxy. So we're looking out through our galaxy and we pick up a few stars, right? Then we see the object somewhere downstream from there. And then in the background, we have these galaxies behind. So that's, that's, uh, that's a lot of depth there. That's a lot of depth. Hello, Totterbert. So let's see, it's, um, it's pretty small, right? Half an arc minute by a third of an arc minute or so. I get, okay, no, 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 five, five, two, 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 three twos. Yeah, five, two, 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 two. Five, two, two, two. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? The right ascension is 13 hours and the declination is 13 degrees. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. The same, same thing there. Thanks, Uncle Bill, for the screenshots. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll fly over there and take a look at those, too. That you're so kind to uh, do that for us voluntarily. <laughs> Here's all the different names. And interestingly enough, there is a 5222A. So I don't know what that's all about. All these others are just, you know, different catalogs that have been created over the years. You know, they, they, they'll create a catalog for a particular kind of object. And then anything that fits those parameters um, are given some kind of name or designation or number or something. So that's all that is, that's all that is. And as you can see, most of the names or a lot of the names are just are just are just the right ascension and declination of the object right 1334 1334 1334 so yeah 1334 they're all you know just the position of them in the sky which as far as i'm concerned that's that's a brilliant way of doing things yeah 52 22 So not very, very well studied, 40 uh, in sort of the history of science, modern science. Not much there. We've got some distances and velocities. Let's look at that. Well, that's pretty far out there. So um, uh, an MPC, this MPC thing right here, that stands for mega parsecs, millions of parsecs. A parsec is 3.26 light years. So a mega parsec is just 3.26 million light years. And then I multiply that by 102.9. And we get 335 million light years away. So that's not that's not really close. It's also not totally very far away. That's somewhere in the middle. So yeah, you know, a third of a billion light years away. Yeah, I I gotta say that's starting to get a little bit far. Just a little bit. And it looks like it's moving towards us. 
or we are moving towards it, or how about this, we're mutually moving towards one another at, what, about 7,000 kilometers per second or so? So, yeah, that's uh, actually, no, not moving towards one another, moving away from one another. When the value is positive here, that means that it is moving away. So, yeah, m moving away from us at about 7,000 kilometers per second. So that ain't, uh, that ain't uh, very slow. So let's, uh, let's go over, I bet you Uncle Bill has uh, put things over on the Discord already. Thank you, thank you, Uncle Bill, for all your help. He's probably helping another, you know, 50 live streams right now, too, which makes me just incredibly jealous. I can do maybe one thing at a time pretty well. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, a little bit far. Not, that's really not incredibly far, Jill. It's really not. I mean, you know, considering that the, the visible, uh, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I don't think I want to get into this, but, you know, the visible size of the universe, um, is about, you know, 12, 13 billion light years. Um, and then uh, there, there are various thoughts about, you know, how, does it extend beyond that? And, and the answer is yes, and, but nobody really knows how much further out it goes. But I've heard lots of numbers, you know, hundreds hundreds of billions of light years radius. So a third of a billion, even, even with sort of the visible um, arena, it's not really all that much. It's not really all that, that far away. So, and it is, you know, it's a matter of wrapping your head around this and, and um, uh, sort of, giving into this sensation of big, right? You have to, uh, you have to uh, surrender, surrender to the big. And uh, it makes it a little bit easier because you sort of, you know, I mean, really that's, that's one of the things that, that um, when you're getting into astronomy, you have to, you have to get over pretty quickly is is the uh, uh, is thinking too much about about uh, you know the scale of what you're talking about um, because everything is just I mean you know we we here are are in an extremely benign environment I mean really benign. Um, considering what's going on around us, right? Okay, so it's over in, uh, in Boides. So there's Uncle Bill's first, uh, first wide field shot. So yeah, okay, it's uh, the, the Virgo cluster of galaxies is over here, right? Here's Leo, here's Virgo. This whole, this whole area here, right? This whole area going all the way up in the bowl of the Big Dipper, um, Atta, there are, there are at least 10, I would say, galaxies that are visible um, with your eight inch scope. Just in the bowl, of the Dipper itself. 
and then it goes all the way down, right? There's a there's there's the um, the Virgo cluster here. There's a coma cluster. Um, so this is like galaxy central, right? Lots of galaxies here. Um, I would say with your with the eight inch that you're thinking about um, getting that just in this area alone, you will see, you'll be able to see at least, at least 30 or 40 galaxies, just, just in this area, just in this, this part of the sky. Now, if you catch the fever, right? And it's like, oh, you know, I wish I could, you know, I've, I've looked at all 40 of these, right? Oh man, if I only had a, a 16 inch, then, then I could see, you know, a hundred of these or even more, right? So, uh, yeah, just, just be careful. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, yeah. Great location for a galaxy for sure. And when we look at the, uh, when we look at the, um, um, the pictures, um, we'll definitely, uh, see lots of, lots of galaxies around it, I'm sure. Okay. So here's sort of a zoomed in, more zoomed in view. So here's some, here's some other known objects over here, right? Here's Arcturus, right? Alpha, Alpha Boides. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. The, you know, the, uh, um, yeah, I think if, if, uh, if, if we have or had some, uh, some Southern um, Hemisphere, viewers um this view probably wouldn't be too useful um because they're they're probably not even going to be able to see it right but so there it is it's actually it looks like it's not in boides it looks like it's in um um whatever the one uh down below is that um coma, coma berenices is that what I saw up here? Uh, Homo Berenices. No, it's in, uh, it's in Virgo. Okay. It's definitely in Virgo. Well, cool. Okay. So let's go back over here and yeah, let's, let's, um, you know, all right. I've gotten into this habit. I want to see if the HST has ever seen it. I said this was going to be a short show, didn't I? <laughs> Virgo, yeah, yeah. Right in, right where they all intersect. NGC five two two two. Now it's extremely unlikely. No, nothing. That ends that. So let's let's go over and just take a look here. It's a pretty big galaxy. Ooh, nice. So there's our object of the day, NGC 5222. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's got some friends. And, you know, I would say, right, just, just by looking at the sizes, this is, this one and this one and this one all look about the same size. So I'm going to say they're probably all, you know, also about as far away, yeah, more or less. So they're probably all associated with one another. That's, that's a, that's a 
relatively good guess, I think. I would say that these two are behind, right? I said that before. Well, and all these other small ones, right? Maybe even behind those. So, but very cool, nice elliptical, very nice elliptical. But he's got some friends. He's got this one, which is uh, which is pretty amazing looking. Check that out. Wow, what is going on there? Wow, that's uh, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty weird looking. Is that uh, galaxy interaction of some sort? Is it interacting with uh, 5222? Whoa. Well, you know, maybe it is, right? I don't know. Maybe if, if we look in the papers, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I I think you're exactly right, um, Uncle Bill. North North, it, this is as if it would appear in the sky, right? So north is up, and left is east. But that's a pretty cool looking uh, galaxy there. I think that's spectacular and there's there's some interesting there's some really interesting structures in the nucleus too you see that there's these vertical things it looks like and then there's just this ball it's just it's just you know i mean using these colors it's just like a like a orange yellow ball wow and then all this material i mean these are probably stars right but you got some gas and dust in there probably too. But yeah, that's all been strewn out. And I don't know, is that close enough? I don't know. Let's see if, um, let's see if, if the papers have any, uh, have any, anything we can sort of infer or actually read. FR zero radio galaxies probing gas and dust on the tidal tail of NGC 5221. Okay, now is is 5221 that that one with the with the tails? Should we find out? We need a picture. We know exactly what it looks like. Yeah, I don't know who exactly um, said that, Otto, but I've I've been saying that for for uh, a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's to uh to understand our position here is 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 both extremely humbling and extremely uh just just inspiring so uh yeah and and it's hard to it's hard to balance those two things because they're they're almost like opposites So here we go. Let's see if there's a picture. We need to see a picture. Oh, it is. Look at that. It is. So NGC 5221. Oh, that is so cool. 
Check it out. Oh, thanks, Jill. Yeah, it's the uh, it's a holiday here in the United States. The uh, the uh, I guess the birth of this nation occurred on this day with the the signing of the uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you want a really good read, okay, a really good read. What you need to find, right, is this series of, of um, writings done at the time called um, the Federalist Papers and also there's, there's another book that's called the, the Anti-Federalist Papers. Um, and the book that I have also has the Constitutional Convention debates. So you can actually, you know, I mean, these are transcripts of what was said uh, while constructing Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And uh, that is extremely interesting and extremely helpful to let you understand and appreciate what we have here and and um, you know and if you think about it just a little bit you understand you begin to understand why why we seem to be always in these messes right but that's a completely different live stream what we're doing <laughs> uh, is looking at um, a companion galaxy to our object of the day um, where the, it's showing off these incredible tidal what, what do they call them? Tidal streams? Tidal tails. So that's just very cool to see that. And does it say anywhere in here that it's actually 5222 that's doing that? Um, A number of galaxies listed in table five are, are at a comparable redshift to NGC 5221 and within a few hundred, 100,000 parsecs from it. Uh, the two most prominent galaxies in the list, 5222 and 5230, are likely candidates to have interacted with NGC 5221 including the observed tidal stream. Yeah, that's very cool. So let's try, should we try? Let's try to see if HST has seen this one. Sort of shifting gears a little bit. We're still, 5222 is still, is still the bomb. Right, but let's see if there's any more cool images of 5221. Unlikely. Oh, there's one. Oh, preview for this observation not available. Wham. Uh, I've got a kitty's misbehaving in here. All right. Well, there's no HST preview. So, but it looks like um, looks like they've got a uh,
trying to see if there's anything specific about 5222. Presented interstellar absorption lines observed in the spectrum of type 1 supernova. The gas corresponds to tidally stripped ISM at least 80 kiloparsecs from the center of the host galaxy. Huh. Yeah, I'm not uh, was expecting to see how this thing is being interacted with. Hmm. All right, well, I guess we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, we'll have to maybe look at this a little bit more because there's a lot of information here. Much more than what I'm capable of, you know, trying to interpret and understand just sort of off off the cuff. It's kind of fun to do that, but uh, yeah, I think I think I'd want to understand this a little bit better to really know what's going on. I mean, so, clearly, right? Something is making the the objects in this galaxy, you know, be it stars or gas or dust, whatever it is, um, something is making making these objects uh you know sort of sort of fly off the galaxy so uh yeah who knows who knows all right well that's that's the companion galaxy to 5222 let's um let's see if there's an actual paper on Five two two two. That was close. And now we know that five two two one is, is apparently interacting with five two two two. The incidence of nuclear activity in galaxy pairs with different morphologies. H2 data collection, luminosity, redshift dependence. Not really seeing anything else. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bummer when it rains and everybody's all excited about fireworks. Here we have sort of the opposite problem. It's always it's always a fire a fire starter around here. Oh, so there was a supernova. There was a supernova in it back in uh well, let's find it out. Cool. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get lucky with this or not. I don't think I am. Electronic sign in. Wah. Not going to let me. Central Bureau for Electronic Telegrams, number 1477. All right, well, let's see if there's any, uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't see any other. So that was just a telegram, not even a, really a paper or anything. I didn't see any uh, papers after that about that supernova. Hmm, a little strange, let's say.
Sorry, I'm making you dizzy probably. Oh, I went too far. There it is, okay. Groups. Yeah, I'm just not really seeing anything else. A nice looking elliptical that seems to be interacting with that uh, spiral up there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's all I see. All right. Well, I think I think it's about time to get on out of here. I said it was going to be short. Oh, well. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. But, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to get out of here for, for now. I was just reading Otta's latest, latest uh, chat comment. Um, yeah, yeah, you've got to be ready. You definitely have to be ready. Um, even, even if, uh, well, I mean, especially in those um, circumstances, of course. But, uh, you know, even, even in the best of um, circumstances, um, especially if if you're thinking about having to, you know, take take all your equipment out to a dark site, then then it, you know it's it starts to become an event, right? I mean, if at least in the short term, you can get away with just you know sort of dragging it outside, outside your back door or front door, and and uh, um, doing that. But anyway. Yeah, no worries. I'm going to get out of here for now. So take care. I will see you on the spin. And yeah, Jill, I don't really have any reason to to stop. Um, so yeah, yeah, just just looking for just looking for the crowd. So all right, take care, everybody. See you in about uh, 23 ish hours. Okay, bye.